In this video, I'm going to talk about some applications of the trigonometric ideas that we've discussed. These application problems are essentially word problems, and so I just want to talk generally about word problems because these tend to be challenging for most students. And one of the reasons why they're challenging is that they really can all seem very different from one another. So from one problem to the next, it seems like you're starting from scratch and doing everything from the beginning. So some general tips are to make sure to read the problem carefully, draw a diagram if necessary. Many problems will give you a diagram, but if not, then you drawing your own diagram might be very helpful. And then try to relate the information to, that's given to you in the problem to other problems that you've encountered before. Because really, even though it seems like word problems might all be different from one another, they really do have some commonalities. And the more practice problems you work through, the more you're going to see those commonalities. So one of the things that comes up a lot when we talk about application problems specifically relating to trigonometry is the idea of angle of elevation and the angle of depression. And all that means is that if you're imagining looking at an object, um, the angle formed by the horizontal and your line of sight to the object is either the angle of elevation if the object is above the horizontal, or sometimes it's called the angle of depression if the object is below the horizontal. So that's really all that's going on. It's just the angle formed between the horizontal and your line of sight to the object that you're looking at. So here's an example problem that uses that idea of angle of elevation. So we're supposed that we're standing 500 feet from the base of a building that has a radio tower at the top. When we look up to the bottom of the tower, the angle of elevation is 54.3 degrees, and the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 55.7 degrees. And we want to use this information to figure out how tall the tower is. So the picture would look something like this. Here's the building. Here's the bottom of the tower, which is the top of the building. And then here's the top of the tower. So we've got two different angles as we look up to that tower here 500 feet away from the bottom of the building. So that's a right angle at the bottom. Buildings are usually vertical, so that makes sense for that to be a right angle. And so we've got these two angles here that help us figure out this height. So there's really two heights going on here. So we've got the height here, which is the height of the tower, maybe I'll call that T, but we've also got this height, which is the height of the building, maybe I'll call that B. So we really have two separate triangles. We've got a triangle with a 54.3 degree angle looking up at the top of the building, which is the bottom of the tower, and this distance is 500. But we've got a slightly larger triangle, which still has 500 down here at the bottom, a 55.7 degree angle. And then this distance is actually the, the height of the building plus the height of the tower, B plus T. So our trigonometric functions can apply to both of these triangles separately and help us figure out the value of t that we're looking for. So one thing to keep in mind when we're thinking about using trigonometric functions involving these triangles is which trigonometric function should we use? Well, what we know about in these triangles are the opposite side from the angle that we're given and the adjacent side. We don't know anything about the hypotenuse. And what's more, the problem isn't asking us anything about the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse should not come into play at all. So now we think to ourselves, which trig function or which trig functions involve the opposite and the adjacent? And so from our knowledge of trig functions, we know that that's going to be either tangent or cotangent. And it really doesn't matter which one we use. So I'm going to use tangent because tangent is the one that I have a button for on my calculator. So there's no reason to use tangent versus cotangent in this problem other than to use cotangent would be a little bit more complicated because I can't easily figure out the cotangent of an angle using my calculator. So I'm going to choose tangent. What does it mean to choose tangent in this problem? Well, what we know is that the tangent of this angle, 54.3 degrees, is equal to opposite over adjacent, b over 500. And over here, the tangent of 55.7 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, b plus t over 500. So I'm going to use that first equation to figure out b, plug the result that I get into the second equation, and then solve that for t. That's my plan. OK, so on my calculator, I can type in tangent of 54.3 degrees. As we talked about in the previous video, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode here. And when I do that, I get 1.39165.
you're typically going to get a number with a lot of decimal places. So even if you don't need all of those decimal places by the end of your problem, you should keep a lot of decimal places around because, especially in this case, we're multiplying it by 500. So we don't want to round too much too soon. So let's keep those decimal places. Multiply both sides by 500. So B is going to equal 500 times 1.39165. And that gives me approximately 695.8, in this case, feet. Now that's the height of the building. That's not what they asked us for, but it does allow us to figure out the height of the tower. So now we go to the other equation. So we've got the tangent of 55.7 degrees. I put that in my calculator. I get 1.46595. That's gonna be B plus T over 500. Multiply both sides by 500. That's gonna give me B plus T equals 732.973. And then I plug in what B is. So that's 695.8 plus T equals 732.973. That's going to give me T is approximately 37.2 feet. And that's my final answer. All right, let's do another one. So we're standing in a flat parking lot. We observe a car that is 50 feet away. We turn 30 degrees to our right. And then we observe another car that is 100 feet away. And we want to know how far apart the two cars are from each other. So again, let's try drawing a picture here. So we're standing at a particular point. We're looking 50 feet away. We see a car. So this distance is going to be 50. And then we rotate 30 degrees to our right. So this angle is going to be 30 degrees. And then we see another car that's 100 feet away. And what we want to know is the distance between the two cars. That's the thing that we're looking for. OK, so this time it's a little bit more complicated because we don't know that this triangle that we've drawn is a right triangle. It might turn out that one of those angles is a 90 degree angle, but we don't know that. And so all of our trigonometry doesn't really work unless we have a right triangle. So one of our steps in this problem is going to be to create a right triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a perpendicular line from the first car over to this other side. I'm going to drop that perpendicular, create a right angle. And so now in this triangle that I've just created, I've got a right angle and I've got some distances that I might want to figure out. So maybe I'll call this distance X and I'll call this distance Y. So in that triangle, I'm just going to draw it separately over here. I've got my right angle. I've got a 30 degree angle here. I've got Y and I've got X, and I've got 50. And then what I've also created is another right triangle on the other side, where this hypotenuse is the thing that I want. Maybe I'll call that Z. So Z is ultimately what I want. This distance is still Y. And then this distance here, well, the entire side from where I was standing to the second car was 100. This distance in my first triangle was X. So this distance here is going to have to be 100 minus x. So if I can figure out x and y, that's going to help me figure out z. z is what I want, and that'll be the answer to my problem. OK, so let's use trigonometry in our first triangle here. So we can figure out x and y using our trig functions. So x is the adjacent side, and 50 I know is the hypotenuse. So what relates the adjacent to the hypotenuse? Again, there's really two trig functions I could use, cosine and secant. But I'm going to use cosine because cosine is the one that I have a button for on my calculator. So I know that cosine of 30 degrees is going to be x divided by 50. And similarly, sine of 30 degrees is going to be y divided by 50. So again, using my calculator or using my special triangles that we talked about before, I can multiply both sides by 50. So x is going to be 50 times the cosine of 30 degrees. That works out to be approximately 43.3. And then the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so we multiply both sides by 50, we get y equals 25. So now I know that y is 25. I know that 100 minus x, well, that's going to be 100 minus 43.3. That's going to be 56.7. So I figured out the two of the three sides of that second right triangle. Unfortunately, I don't know any of the angles in that second triangle. But in this case, we're not going to use trigonometry. We're just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're just going to say that 25 squared plus 56.7 squared is going to equal z squared. That gives me z squared equals 
uh, actually I figured out Z is going to equal 61.9668, which is approximately 62 feet. So I worked all that out ahead of time. So that's our approach for this problem. So a little bit trickier because we had to draw an extra side to create a right triangle. But other than that, we use the similar techniques to what we talked about before. And also keep in mind, it doesn't always have to be trigonometry, right? In this case, we ended up using the Pythagorean theorem at the end because we didn't know any of the angles, but we did know two of the three sides of that right triangle. Okay, so here's some more general tips. Look for right triangles. Sometimes they'll be right in front of you in terms of the problem that you're being asked. Sometimes you might have to create them. And then choose the trig function that matches the distances that you know or that you want to know. Again, this is a really common mistake that students make is they just sort of randomly pick a trig function, even though it might involve a side of the triangle that they don't know anything about or that they don't even want to know anything about. So think about that in terms of figuring out whether you want to use sine, cosine, or tangent. So next time we're going to talk about trigonometric functions of any angle. One of the limitations to what we've done so far is that our trig functions only work when we're looking at acute angles. So what about other angles and what are some ways that we can compute those trig function values of any angle? That's what we'll talk about next time and I'll see you then.